In the near future, a Chinese spaceship comes back to Earth with a newly discovered energy source called Shantang. Within just a few years, it replaces traditional energy sources, and cities see unprecedented and super-fast development. Unfortunately using so much of this energy also gets the attention of a species of aliens that one day bring their ships to attack all the major cities across the globe as revenge for stealing the Shantang. The attack comes as a total surprise and leaves all the cities in ruins without Shantang to depend on. Eventually the leaders of 97 countries hold an emergency meeting in Shanghai to create a unique defense system to save the last standing city in the world. Using a simulation that plays the aliens sending their flying robots for another attack, the Grey Eagle team, formed by Zhang, Zheng Yu, Yi Yi, and Pan, controls the latest models of military drones to engage the robots in battle. Their teamwork is excellent because they each have skills that complement each other and they were trained by Commander Lin Lan herself. Commander Yi Yun is very happy with the results and notices Zhang is particularly good at piloting. Lin Lan confirms this by saying he's the best by far. It turns out Zhang used to be part of the logistic team that built the Shanghai Cannon, which has allowed Shanghai to be the last standing fortress. But as things got worse he joined the battling team to help. After another day spent training, Zhang leaves the office and rushes to the elevator so he can leave with Lin Lan, who Zhang has a huge crush on. Today it's Lin Lan's birthday, and Zhang wants to gift her a flower, but he's shy and hesitant. By the time he gathers courage, Lin Lan is already leaving the elevator. Later at home, Zhang sends her a message about today's training and is delighted to see her answer he did well. Sometime later, Yi Yun informs Lin Lan that New Delhi has also fallen to an alien attack and he wants her to use the information gathered there to improve their defenses. Suddenly Code Red is announced in the fortress, it turns out an alien mothership has appeared above Shanghai. People begin panicking all over the city, but soon the soldiers guide them to the corresponding shelters before joining their teams at the fortress. Among their many defenses, the city has a special force field that stops the laser beam the mothership opens its attack with. However the force field can't stand up for long, and when the beam manages to make a hole, the aliens send an army of robots through it before the engineers fix it. The pilots immediately send their drones to fight them, being careful not to hurt any civilian that is still running to a shelter. One of the robots approaches the fortress and lands in the middle of the road, causing a car accident that almost hits a girl, luckily Jang pushes her out of the way just in time. Then the robot begins shooting at everything in its path, so the artillery team opens fire to try to stop it, to no avail. Jang tries to help as well without much luck, but at that moment a tank controlled by Lin Lan arrives and destroys it in seconds. The drones finish taking down the rest of the robots just in time for the engineers to finish fixing the force field, thus the mothership leaves the area for now. Later, the science division informed the committee that they scanned the mothership during the fight and discovered a weak point in it. The committee wants to use the Shanghai cannon to hit it, but Yi Yun doesn't let them because a counterattack could put people's lives at risk. Afterward Yi Yun takes Lin Lan to a secure facility to explain that Shanghai has the last deposit of Shantang, which is highly unstable and the only thing that keeps the city going, including the fortress and the force field. If they shoot the cannon, they would waste all the remaining Shantang and leave the city defenseless. The best way to keep the aliens at bay is to continue training their eagle team so they can replace the force field one day. Meanwhile Jang and his friends are hanging out on a rooftop, sharing a drink and their dreams about what they'd do with their lives if they weren't at war. Pan in particular wants to finish his bike and ride it freely. They're suddenly interrupted by an emergency call that announces the city is under attack again, so they rush back to the fortress, ready to fight. As usual the force field comes up to stop the incoming beams, however Pan notices something weird. While many holes in the shield have been achieved, the enemy robots still don't attack. This makes him realize this is a trap, the aliens are making them repair the field over and over so they'll run out of Shantang and the city will be defenseless. The next time a beam goes through the field, it causes lots of damage inside the fortress, and the robots finally make their way in. The soldiers have no choice but to fight face to face, but mere bullets aren't enough, and many of them die in the process. The eagles join the battle as backup to help, but they can't do much and prefer to go inside to gain control of the drones. While the eagles use the drones to begin fixing the force field, the committee goes against Yi Yun's orders and sends a man to activate the cannon. They don't use the full power to avoid losing all their shantang, but it hits the mothership hard enough. The eagles also successfully finish repairing the field, so the mothership has no choice but to go away. Nearby, a robot reveals not to be as destroyed as they thought. Later in the evening, the eagles spend some time with their personal hobbies, and Jang dares to finally invite Lin Lan on a bike ride. However this turns out to be a dream, but when Jang wakes up he discovers there is other good news, the eagles have been promoted thanks to their amazing performance last night. Yi Yi decides they need to celebrate their promotion, and the team goes to a club to have fun, but Jang can't stop thinking about Lin Lan. While he's brooding on the roof, Yi Yi notices his mood and advises him not to be afraid to confess his feelings to Lin Lan because who knows if the aliens will let him do so in the future. Sometime later, the team watches on TV how the man that shot the cannon gets an even better promotion, and during his speech, he makes reference to a loved one. Jang thinks this is Lin Lan and gets in a very blue mood. Later in the evening, 
Jang goes to a noodle restaurant for dinner and is surprised to find Lin Lan there. They discuss the pressure of having to save the world and lament the lives lost in battle. Seeing how tense Lin Lan is, Jang is finally brave enough to give her the gift as a way to cheer her up. After she leaves, Jang sends her a message asking her to meet the next day, and he's delighted to see she accepts. The next day, Pan and Zheng Yu put Jang in a leather jacket to impress his date. However Yi thinks it's not fitting and makes him wear his uniform instead. Moments later, Jang meets with Lin Lan and is disappointed to hear she only wanted to meet to check on the generators. While Jang does the maintenance, Lin Lan tells him about her training days and how her father had been a cold soldier that died in battle. Lin Lan can't help crying at the memory, and as she watches the sky, she tells Jang that she hopes they can build a future where kids can look up and see the stars instead of the beams that keep up the force field. Sometime later, people panic when they notice that the ground is starting to split, almost as if an invisible earthquake has hit the area. Yi Yun tells the committee that the energy deposits aren't stable and the use of the cannon has made it worse, meaning there's a risk of the force field will go down soon. Suddenly an alert warns them that cracks have mysteriously appeared on the force field, so Yi Yun rushes back to the command center to guide the eagles into repairing them. Thanks to skillful teamwork, the field goes back to normal, but at this rate it is only temporary. At that moment, a robot breaks through the roof into the command center and begins killing people. The soldiers try to stop it with their guns, but bullets can't damage it. Pan tries hitting it with a fire extinguisher but it doesn't do anything either, and the robot doesn't hesitate to hit Pan in return before dragging him to the force field panel to disable it. With his dying breath, Pan activates the self-destruct sequence, and Jang and Zheng Yu have to drag a crying Yi out before the room explodes. With the robot destroyed, the force field goes back up immediately. In the evening, the team takes a moment to mourn Pan and the other casualties with the respect they deserve, and Yi is given Pan's tags. When they return to their dorms, Jang gives Yi Pan's bike key because he had always wanted her to have it. Sometime later, the committee discusses the option of giving up on Shanghai, but Yi Yun refuses and reveals he's made a battle plan for their last chance. The idea is to shut down the force field and direct all that power to the cannon so that it'll be strong enough to actually destroy the mothership. The eagles will have to be the defense instead of the shield, and the team accepts the mission even if it's incredibly dangerous. Yi Yun also asks Lin Lan to stay in the Shantang room and stand on guard. All civilians are sent away to shelters until the streets are completely empty, this will allow soldiers to fight more freely and have tanks on every corner. Before they join the fight, each soldier leaves an item inside a box that will last 100 years in case the city falls to ruins too. Zheng Yi leaves a letter for his parents, and Yi Yi leaves Pan's keys. Jiang chooses his phone, but first he sends a message to Lin Lang confessing his feelings. Unfortunately because of the current power problems, it isn't sent. This time the eagles will have to fly actual planes instead of controlling the drones. As soon as the force field is shut down, the alien robots descend and start a fierce fight in the sky. The eagles coordinate their skills in the air together with an army of drones, but unfortunately it isn't enough and a few robots fly past them to attack the command center. With encouraging last words for his team, Yi Yun dies when the room explodes. Next the robots begin making their way to the Shantang facility, so the eagles and the tanks rush to try to stop them. As another battle begins with both sides losing soldiers every second, Lin Lan checks on the cannon and discovers it's fully charged, they only need to wait for the mothership to get in the right position. The robots manage to break the line of defense on the ground, and one of them jumps on Yi Yi's plane. Jang asks her to do a flip and flies closer to hit the robot with his own plane, effectively destroying the enemy but also catching his own wing on fire. Jang has no choice but to evacuate in the emergency pod, which lands right in the middle of the battle. He immediately joins the fight with his guns, shooting at the robots as close as possible, and when a robot is about to kill him, Yi Yi shows up and shoots it with her plane. Then she joins the fight on foot as well, determined to get revenge for Pan. Meanwhile Zheng Yu flies toward the mothership to try to make it move toward the cannon. There are too many robots surrounding him though, so he needs backup. Yi Yi rushes back to the command center and while thinking about Pan, she activates a special grenade that takes out a good amount of robots, sacrificing herself in the process. While Jiang rejoins Zheng Yu in the air by using Yi Yi's plane, the mothership finally moves. The cannon is immediately shot, causing a huge explosion that also damages the surrounding buildings. When the air clears, everyone is shocked to discover the attack has failed because the robots took the shot to defend the mothership. With almost no hope left, Lin Lan remembers why Yi Yun left her there, the cannon was shot with the energy from the force field, but as a last resort, they can shoot one more time with the remaining Shantang energy. This will leave the city powerless and cause the land to sink. Accepting the risks, the cannon begins recharging while Zheng Yu and Jiang continue to protect it. A robot manages to sneak inside the Shantang facility and begins killing every person in its way, but at that moment, Lin Lan pulls the lever and activates the last resort. All the buildings and the land begin sinking, bringing down the robot with them, and Lin Lan offers a heartfelt speech before dying that makes Jiang cry. To make matters worse, the soldiers discover that the cannon's guidance system was damaged during the sinking. Jiang tells them to open the infrared guidance device and lock it in his position so he can guide the cannon, 
and Zeng Yu flies ahead to clean the way. The robots take the bait and go after him, and Zeng Yu self-destructs to bring them down with him. Now that the mothership has no protection, Jang flies right into it to serve as a guide and the cannon shoots its last charge, finally destroying the ship for good. As days pass, Shanghai is slowly rebuilt with the effort of traditional technology instead of Shantang. It's then revealed that Jen has survived by ejecting the pod right before the cannon hit, and now he's been given the highest promotion. However he still misses his team terribly and likes to revisit the places where they used to hang out. One evening he visits the noodle restaurant, and a co-worker brings him the box where he left his phone. When Jang checks it, he's discovered that his confession had been sent and Lin Lan only replied received. With tears in his eyes, Jang sends her one last message, telling her to sleep well. Then a flashback reveals that when Jang chose to join the army, he had Lin Lan's guidance on how to fill in the form. He fell in love with her that day and that's why he chose the fortress as his destination. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.